Today I'm going to document the repair of a crate 50. I don't know the exact model number of this. Very nice clean amplifier. I've already got the amp out, but this is the case. It has uh, two 12 inch speakers in it. They actually wired in series. Each are 8 ohms, so it's wired for 16 ohms. And the amplifier is out here. I've actually already determined the problem with this amplifier, but I want to show you some uh, some of the results. Uses a pair of six CA sevens, four twelve AX sevens, and the problem with it is the output transformer is bad. And I'll, I'm going to prove it here in a minute. But first, I want you to see what it looks like. Here we're feeding uh, a one kilohertz tone into the microphone input. We're driving it with a. Uh, Tektronix SG505 low distortion oscillator. We'll be watching it on the distortion meter and the voltage output. This is in millivolts right now, so it's very low. And uh, then we also, of course, watch for an oscilloscope just to see what the waveform looks like. Our frequency will be a kilohertz when I crank it up. So let's run it up a little bit, watching the output. And there we go. We get that high. Before the before the waveform really goes bad, there's our kilohertz, and there's our output voltage, less than one volt, 0.9 volts. Not much power. That would be if it were one volt, it'd be one squared divided by eight, so it'd be an eighth of a watt at 16% distortion. <coughs> kilohertz waveform output. Pretty sad. Same thing down here on another another, another oscilloscope. Yeah, really in really bad shape. And the problem is the output transformer. I've measured it with an ohm meter. It's kind of hard to tell. I can't tell directly that it's bad by measuring it with an ohm meter. I don't see anything shorted to the case. And um, the resistance reading from the center tap to each plate lead is not they're different, but they're not terribly different. So, but anyway, about the only way to solve some of these kinds of problems is substitution. I'm going to clip lead this this big guy right here in. This is a uh, 3,500 ohm. This is a this is a monster. I'm going to clip lead this fella in, in just a minute. 3,500 ohm center tap, and it has a uh, down here on the 8 ohm tap. It's rated at 100 watts, and then we'll we'll see what happens. I have to turn it over, disconnect, and clip lead it, and then we'll, uh, we'll go there. I did want to show one other thing. Look at the plates of these tubes. That is way overheated. And again, look at our output. It's gone all the way up to a volt at 15.6%. There it is again. There's our distortion. And there's what the plates of our tubes look like. Not good. Those tubes aren't going to last long like that, and it begins to smell. So uh, when that's something to look for right there, even in itself. If you're just getting really low output, you get a really high distortion, and the plates of your tubes are glowing red, you got a big problem. And it very well may be your output transformer. Okay, now I've got a, a big transformer, the one I just showed you, jumpered in by clip leads. A, a bit of a dangerous operation because we do have high voltage out here, 400 volts, so you, you can get hurt and possibly even killed. I'm not recommending you do this, but uh, I do it this way, and this way I choose. These are uh, the transformer, the old transformer. Whoops. Really didn't want to pull that off. That makes that a little scary. Uh, here's the other old transformer leads right here plate lead here and a plate lead here and, and the center tap right here. Center tap and two plate leads. I pulled off and then I jumpered the transformer in to one plate connection and the other white lead to the other plate connection. And the white leads go right over there. The red lead, the center tap, goes back to the power supply connections and uh, our test equipment and dummy load is down here on the 8 ohm load. So here's now what we get. If we watch our oscilloscope, we start cranking it up. We got an enormous output. There we are. 18 and a half volts at 6%. I generally run them all the way up to 
about 10% in, in a musical amplifier. So there we go. 19.6 volts at 10%. Nice clean sine wave once we turn it down. 19.6, well 20 squared is 400 divided by 8 is 50 watts. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it's doing quite a nice job. Uh, the old crate uh, amplifier. So uh, it puts out puts out good power with a good transformer. This transformer, while it would work in there, let's turn down that tone a little bit, our monitor tone. While it would work in there, it's uh, it's a little bit large. I think it would uh, overwhelm the amplifier. But there you go. You have uh, an amplifier uh, with a bad. Um, output transformer. I'd go through uh, the uh, ohmmeter measurements with an analog ohmmeter using that, but uh, it's it's pretty inconclusive by trying to measure these leads right here with an ohmmeter and determine for sure the best way is substitution. Of course, if you don't have something to substitute, well, that's kind of a different dilemma, but I happen to be blessed with a lot of parts. I'm going to show you, I'm going to uh, hook up the uh, the ammeter to it and uh, adjust the plate, adjust the bias so that the plate current's 100 volts. And I'll show you how you, I'll show you how to do that, and then uh, the resulting bias voltage. Okay, now we've got a meter inserted right here between the high voltage lead and the center tap, so that we can measure the uh, the plate current. There it is, 96 milliamps. A good place. The uh, bias adjustment pot's right here, this little blue one. So we'll, uh, we'll tinker with it a little bit. I'm going to adjust it and watch the current. Turn it this way and get the turn. We can uh, we can raise it. The screwdriver is almost too big. Now that's lowering it, so we're, we're making the bias voltage more negative, so we'll make the bias bias voltage less negative. We'll set it at, that's 102 milliamps. 100 milliamps, 50 milliamps per tube for a 6CA7 is a, a good operating point. And the voltage happens to be right here, 1, 2, 3, 4, pin 5, about minus 30. So that's a good, that's a good place to set the, uh, the bias voltage. Of course, that's with no drive. If you start driving it with a signal, all this is going to change. But that's a good uh, static point. That's a good amount of current and uh, it'll keep your tubes uh, from overheating. If you make it less negative, like say minus 27, 25, then you're going to get a lot more plate current and uh, shorten the life of your tubes. Okay, we've run the bias, uh, excuse me, the, the, the drive back down to about 8 watts. Well, no, it'd be actually a little bit more than that. 8 squared would be 16. 8 times 8 is 64. Well, let's do it right. 8.5 squared, 4 divide. Okay, we're running it down at 18 watts now. And we got 3.9% distortion. Well, what I'm going to do is adjust the bias pot right here. We set it a while ago for about minus 31. But I'm going to adjust this very carefully, left and right. 3.89. See, there it goes up. As I lower it ever so slightly, it goes up to 4. 3.5 down to 3.9. 3.8. 3.9. Well, that's as low as it's going to go. Right there. So, running it at uh, 18 watts, half power, so we want to make a bias adjustment so we get the lowest amount of distortion. And that's what we've set it at. And uh, it has not moved significantly, so without uh, lengthening the uh, video unduly, I believe we can, uh, we can uh, pretty well conclude that the, uh, the bias voltage set for 100 milliamps for the pair of tube, 50 milliamp per tube, is the right point to get the lowest amount of distortion. So there you go. Hope this helps.